Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Florio, and I am a regional sales director at One America Long-Term Care. And with me is my friend and colleague today in black and red, and with coffee in hand is Kevin Fisher, also a regional sales director. And uh, we decided to get involved with these LTC coffee breaks once this uh, situation started with the pandemic. And we liked it. We got some great feedback and decided to keep rolling. So our goal is very simple. Uh, we decided that we just wanted to educate, inform, and hopefully inspire. If we can do any one of those three things, hopefully all, uh, we will have felt like we met our goal each week. And speaking of each week, we are here again next Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern and again, 10 a.m. Pacific. So if you have a quarter of an hour you can spare, we'd love to have you join us. And I know a lot of you have. So uh, speaking of that, um, we have also welcome your feedback. Kevin has done a great job of not just putting together this format, but also a really great concise, simple to use feedback form you'll see right at the end of the broadcast. So please send us some information. Some of you just email things in, that's great. At the end, Kev will give you our contact info as well. So please, any guests, any topic you'd like to discuss, we're certainly open to that. So speaking of that, Kevin, I know you have received some feedback just recently. You wanna share that with our listeners? Sure, I've, uh, I've actually gotten quite a bit of, uh, of direct, direct feedback and uh, a, a couple of people, um, specifically BGAs, uh, have said that they're, they're using our, uh, our uh, coffee break on Tuesdays as a, as a form of outreach. So, you know, they're sharing it with all of their distribution to, to get the word out. And, you know, it, it's what I've heard uh, from a couple of different people is it's different. It's not a product push. And, you know, it, it creates some conversations and opportunities that certainly are different. Uh, so, you know, we thank you for one, joining us, uh, two, welcome your encouragement and support, and three, uh, hey, I, I'm begging, keep on doing what you're doing, share us. I have no problem. We can, we can support as many people as you want uh, coming on here. And, and as Michael and I have said before, uh, we're going to run this until we can't run it any longer, um, being we get tired of doing it. Uh, I, I would say you know, we're, we've already gone beyond the July date that we I threw out there. So now we're looking at least Labor Day, probably longer than that. But anyway, uh, th thank you for your for your feedback. Please uh, keep it up. Uh, it can be anything. It can be what we can do better, uh, what you'd like to hear, or even an idea. Uh, so please keep it coming. Uh, we really appreciate it. With that, uh, I want to throw it back to Mike so we can introduce our guest for today. Uh, where we're going to have a, a, a pretty interesting conversation, and I think it's quite timely. Yeah, Kevin, um, you know, there's something that came through at the end of the year called the SECURE Act, and, uh, you know, there's been some misinformation about it, and there's been some really good information that's come out about that, but I thought it would be great to have uh, one of our resident experts on hand and someone who's new to One America as of last year. So welcome, Kelly Hall, to One America and to LTC Coffee Break with One America. Happy to have you on today, Kelly. Thank you for that, I appreciate it. And as you can see from what's up on the screen, uh, and we were talking about this before we started, Kelly's got the whole alphabet soup of letters after her name, so uh, good for you, Kelly. And uh, if you wanna add more, just, uh, I don't know, Kevin's gonna have to get a new line in there to uh, <laughs> put a, maybe, maybe, tighten up the font, a single space or something. So uh, really appreciate you being on, Kelly, and, and relating most specifically how this SECURE Act relates, obviously, to long-term care and to uh, what One America has in its vast array of products. So I'm going to turn it back to Kevin so we can start off the questioning and we'll go back and forth. But thank you again, Kelly, for being here. Sure. All right. Uh, you know, we, we're focusing purely on the SECURE Act today. and. Um, the, the first question that uh, the most, well, that really should be on the forefront of anyone's mind is how how does it affect uh, the the ability to reposition inherited IRA dollars into uh, into a long term care strategy? Well, I think Kevin, we should probably start with a very quick overview of what the heck is Secure Act. What is that? How does it how does it work? What does it mean for us? Well, it was passed at the end of 2019. It was not something that was surprising, the timing was surprising, but the legislation was not. It's been in the works for somewhere in the neighborhood of two to three years we've been seeing legislation proposals float around along those lines. So the SECURE Act basically 
was a design to really help Americans close the gap that exists between the resources they currently have for retirement and the resources they will actually need in retirement. By addressing three general areas, retirement plan access, do I have a retirement plan at work? Lifetime income products, so a pension plan, going back to those old days. And then honestly encouraging and preserving savings. So there are like over 30 some provisions, they apply both to employer plans as well as individual retirement accounts. So there's a number of items that are out there but the one that is of interest to us today and where it fits in beautifully with long-term care is something called the stretch IRA. So anytime you have a major or significant tax law change, there has to be a way to pay for that tax law change. There has to be an opportunity somewhere in order to cover it. So the SECURE Act actually contained four revenue raising proposals that increase revenues by, are you ready? $16.2 billion over the next decade. Wow. Incredible. Can you imagine that? Well, I, this one is going to be a little more stunning to you. Of that revenue, almost all of it, $15.7 billion, would arise from train, uh, changes in the treatment of plans referred to as stretch IRAs or the strategy called stretch IRA. So I like to throw this out there because I like to back up what I say when I tell people that there's revenue raising proposals. I like for you to be able to see it in, in writing, in law, in somewhere easy. So write yourself a note, go to Congressional Research Service and look for an updated in focus uh, short article from January 10th. And it basically tells you exactly what I just said. And for those of you that aren't familiar with what Congressional Research Service is, it's the things that people like me like. It's a think tank for the US government. So it's in writing where you're gonna see that that change in SECURE Act, uh, the change in the SECURE Act for stretch IRAs is really where that money is coming from. So let's talk about it so I can get to long-term care. Well, the SECURE Act radically changed the estate planning landscape for clients' retirement benefits. And when I say dr dramatically changed, I wanna think about this for just a second. There has been a trend in legislative changes that has basically become really, uh, really somewhat spoiling for us in terms of legislation and in terms of death benefit planning for retirement accounts. So think of the Pension Protection Act, you know, the addition of non-spousal beneficiaries being able to move qualified retirement plan assets direct from a plan to an inherited IRA to do what? To stretch out over life expectancy. Uh, think of some other, the deceased spouse's unused estate tax exemption that came from the 2010 Tax Act. Or think of here recently, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that dramatically, albeit temporarily, increased the exemption level of the estate, gift, and generation skipping tax. So now here we come with the SECURE Act with a noteworthy break in positive death planning legislation by effectively cementing the death of the stretch IRA as a planning strategy for our affluent as well as for our emerging affluent clients. So let's do a quick reminder so that we understand and can appreciate the, stra the strategy changes that are getting ready to occur and why we need to think differently for our clients and from a planning perspective. So what is stretch? Well, stretch, you know, it's not an IRA like a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA or a SEP IRA. Instead, it's a strategy, it's a planning strategy. When a deceased owner passes an IRA to his or her non-spousal beneficiaries under the stretch rules, the designated beneficiaries generally were required to withdraw minimum distributions over life expectancy. And, and historically, you know, when you stop to think about it, the right answer about how to handle an inherited IRA would depend upon different factors, the relationship to the deceased the beneficiary's age, the financial institution, the financial situation, whether or not the own IRA owner had begun taking distributions. How have you received the funds outright or through a trust? All of these were things that we would take into account. Now comes the SECURE Act. The big change from the SECURE Act perspective with stretch IRAs is what we call a drain in 10 rule. That's my, my easy way to understand it. So we basically lose the opportunity to stretch over life expectancy for most, but not all beneficiaries. And so basically what will now happen is we have this drain in 10. So sometime after death, distributions have to be completed within 10 years. So it doesn't matter if I take 10% each year or if I take 
50% in year five and the remainder in year 10, it really, none of that really matters. All that matters is that by the end of the 10th year, the account is fully liquidated. Now let's stop and think about that. Big IRA dollars being you know, dispensed out over a very short period of time, a 10 year window. And usually the people that are leaving these dollars are people that are in their 70s, 80s, 90s, right? Who are they leaving it to? They're leaving it to their children that are in their 50s or late 50s, maybe 40s. And when I stop and I think about that, that's usually when we're in our peak earning years. And so that tax fight associated with that short distribution window could be even bigger. And now let's think about, what are you talking about, Kelly? Well, will it push us to a higher tax bracket in our peak earning years? Will it increase our Medicare premiums for you know, a retiree, for example? Irma, have you heard that term before? Could there be a change or an increase in our capital gains rates from as low as zero to as high as 20%? Could it actually trigger the 3.8% net investment income tax? While retirement income is not net investment income, uh, but it, it actually increases our adjusted gross income, which has an effect if I have net investment income. I have the potential for loss of deductions like the, or, and or credits like child tax credit or education credits or for business owners or QBI. So we really need to come up and think of a plan B when it turn in terms of how we're gonna handle IRAs that we don't need as owners. You know, IRAs that we have accumulated significant wealth and we're thinking, I really wanted this to be a legacy. So from my perspective, we're going to have clients that tomorrow, next week, next year, in the very near future, that the actual IRA owner did not have time to really make differences in their planning strategy. So here I am. I inherit the account. I'm in my 50s, and I don't know what to do with this money. My mom left it to me. My dad left it to me. What can I do with it? We are in a unique position. We you know, at One America with Care Solutions have the opportunity to do what I call asset care annuity funding whole life. So what is that? Well, basically that beneficiary non-spousal who inherits the dollars can do a trustee to trustee transfer from wherever the existing financial institution is to our products, to this an asset care annuity funding whole life product. So we're gonna do that importantly via a trustee to trustee transfer. I want it to remain in an inherited status. I want the title to say something along the lines of Kelly Hall as beneficiary of mom doe deceased so that we know it is an inherited account. It's gonna then spit out distributions that are taxable to me for the next 10 years. I'm gonna get that 20% bonus associated with this product. So the good news is I already see my dollars going to work for me because of adding the actual rider associated to it. What will happen, however, is because it is in a beneficiary status, I am not going to end up paying the 10% premature withdrawal penalty, right? So all I'm gonna do is pay the tax, but it is going to fund, importantly, a life insurance contract that can be used for the acceleration of a death benefit for qualified long-term care expenses. Can you imagine that? What a beautiful way to start planning for our future, meaning the, the person who is the non-spousal beneficiary inheriting it, who says, I don't know what to do with the money. How can I reposition it? Well, we know the importance of long-term care. And let me tell you, I tell people all the time, if you need a poster child, I get a little choked up. If you need a poster child, I'm your girl. I'm your girl because my dad had a stroke at 49 years old. He died at 54. I had a sister who had a heart attack at 27 years old and died at 50. 22 heart catheterizations, 18 stents, Whew, huh. 17, uh, sorry, excuse me, 11 eye surgeries to save her eyesight and then passed away at 51. I can't tell you the expenses that my family incurred. So if you need a poster child, why this particular process, you need that storyline, use me. You know, call Michael, call Kevin, and let's talk about how you can reposition those assets and really have some significant coverage for long-term care. Because if you want somebody who believes in it, you've got the girl. Wow, it was a lot of uh, great information there, Kelly. And uh, we certainly appreciate that. 
Uh, I was trying to copiously take notes, but uh, I think <laughs> we need a whole other LTC coffee break webcast just to go over the notes from the presentation that you gave. So I'm going to be extremely brief and high level. But I do want to encourage everyone, if you have other questions, to reach out to Kevin or Justin Fox, uh, his internal, or to Jen Wagner and myself. There you go. Kevin's Johnny on the spot with uh, internals information. I work with Jen. <laughs> that was a good one, Kev. And uh, Kevin works with Justin Fox. And we'd be happy to get you uh, some answers to some questions. Kelly's been great at being responsive. And also, and Kelly, I'm going to put you on the spot here, but if they if the agency at the agency level or even the producer, not the client, but the agency or the producer had a complex situation, Kevin and I could get in touch with you and Kevin or I could set up a conference call with you and the agency or the producer and uh, they could run through the scenario and we could have a discussion. Is that correct, Kelly? A absolutely. That's what I'm here for. I really want to partner with my internal partners, i.e. the two of you, as well as my, my partners out in the field, the people who are on the front line. So I would be more than happy to be part of those conversations. Okay. Um, you know, just uh, like I said, a couple of things, you know, this SECURE Act is going to create a lot of additional revenue. Over 16, I believe Kelly said, $16.2 over the next decade. And the majority of that, I believe it was about $15.7 billion, you said, will come from that stretch IRA alone. And there's details that are just out for public knowledge. And once again, reach out to Kevin or I, and we can get the details from Kelly. But it was a January 10th article from Congressional Research that uh, anyone can access. So uh, a lot of opportunity, a lot of opportunity with One America's product, especially our uh, annuity funding whole life product where we can do that, that money comes in from the annuity, it gets distributed over the 10 years, which Kelly referred to. And the really nice thing about it, and Kevin and I have been talking about this a lot, is that when that money comes over, One America will automatically create an additional 20% bonus. So just happened to me last week, 200,000 came in from the client, they get credited with 240,000, there's the 20% bonus, and distributions over 10 years of 24,000 each year will fund that fully guaranteed whole life One America long-term care product. So just a quick overview, Kelly, that was great. Um, Kevin, you're going to just touch base about uh, our internals and how they can reach us. I see you've already put that up there, but I'll turn it back to you before we close it out. Everything is right there. I'm, I'm kind of doing my, uh, my teller thing, not speaking and just pointing. Uh, but uh, please <laughs> let Justin and Jen uh, run point for you. Um, they can get you to wherever you need. Any questions, please feel free to start with them. Start with us, being Michael and myself. Uh, we're here to help you. Uh, you know, this, this is a lot of information, and you probably have a question or two. Uh, and, you know, that's what we're here for. Uh, more importantly, I want to thank you. Uh, shockingly, and I'm not fibbing today, my coffee is out. And I'm going to ask you to for his inspiration in uh, siesta. Well, thanks, Kev. So uh, I always like to leave it on a positive note. At least I think it's positive. But uh, today's inspirational message comes from a writer from uh, many years ago out of Massachusetts, a couple hundred years ago, by the name of Henry David Thoreau. And he said something I thought was great. Success usually comes to those who are just too busy to be looking for it. So whatever you do this week, whatever you get enthusiastic about, I hope you have a lot of success. And Kevin and I really hope that we get to see you back here again next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern or 10 a.m. Pacific. Kev, your coffee's out. My coffee's out. Coffee break, out. See you next week.